Okay, uh, I, um, maybe you know all about uh, hemophilia A, that is a uh, X-linked uh, bleeding disorder that is caused by the absence of reduced activity of factor eight. And uh, we have uh, three different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, manifestation of the disease based on the residual factor eight uh, clotting activity that is uh, severe when is one, less than 1%, moderate between one and five, and mild between five and 40. And the standard treatment in our days is a plasma derived or recombinant factor eight, and uh, with a big problem that is the formation of inhibitors in 20, 30% of the patients. Uh, as a monogenic disease is a, a very good target for gene therapy and actually in our days uh, there is a clinical trial using, a, there are two clinical trials using AV to deliver factor eight in patients. And these uh, clinical trial, uh, trials are going quite well even though using AV they started to see a decrease in factor eight activity. On the contrary, with the clinical trials with the, uh, factor nine for hemophilia B, they are uh, doing very well. Actually, there are patients that were injected now is over 10 years. And so on the contrary, for, a, for a hemophilia A, uh, things are not so, so smooth. And so this is good for us that we work on lentiviral vectors, that maybe we have still some space to develop our strategies. Uh, there is one problem that on the contrary of factor nine, that is a, a small gene, factor nine is a very uh, large uh, gene. And actually to accommodate the transgene inside the lentiviral vector, but more important in AV, we use what is called B-domain deleted factor eight, because the B-domain is not essential for coagulation, and so has been removed. And so we use this form that is almost half of the original cDNA. And uh, for several years, people targeted the factor eight expression in uh, hepatocytes because based on what was published in 1984 when factor eight gene was cloned, factor eight uh, is expressed by hepatocytes. But uh, um, with the studies, when I arrived in the lab, uh, this is the reason why I specify the story of New York where I went to study uh, cell therapy, uh, we started the, the uh, hypothesis, uh, sorry, I, I will just brief because it's very old, it's 2000, uh, sorry, 2008. My professor said uh, there is a paper of 1999 where they say that factor eight is expressed eight times more in endothelial cells than in hepatocytes. We have the model of uh, hemophilia A mice. We just got these mice from Philadelphia. We know how to isolate hepatocytes and endothelial cells. Why don't we prove uh, this? And uh, very interesting, we found out that the transplantation of hepatocytes was not able to rescue the mice. And so when you were bleeding them, they were dying and there was no factor eight activity. Instead, transplanting endothelial cells in our model using a drug that was killing the naive endothelial cells and favoring the uh, transplanted cells, we were able to have a expression um, of a, here is just GFP, but on the same time were wild type cells in our model of hemophilic mice. And so once we were injecting the cells, the cells were engrafting in the liver and proliferating. And very interesting after three months, we had uh, all these uh, uh, very nice expression of uh, factor eight that was absolutely in therapeutic uh, uh, level. You know, this uh, uh, on the field uh, was a kind of, uh, not scandal, but you know, there was a dogma, you know, factor eight is expressed by hepatocytes and endothelial cells were, uh, there was just this paper. But if you go back and look literature, I always say my student, uh, we have to be the archaeologist of uh, 
of science because now everything is digital. And so we went to take paper of 1970 before cloning, and there were the first histology of a factor eight in the cells, and there were sinusoidal cells. If you were reading the papers, there was written that factor ACE is, seems to be expressed in sinusoidal cells. No discrimination, uh, Kupfer cells, endothelial cells, but was there. We don't know how it happened that uh, uh, change, but this is interesting. And so, but this was mouse. We wanted to be sure that really also human cells were expressing uh, factor eight, and so we were able to get some liver biopsies isolate LSEC and ve uh, verify that really factor eight is expressed also, also in human liver sinusoidal and endothelial cells. This is just uh, important uh, to see because on the same times, what we did was from these biopsies, we confirm our experiment in this way. Take we in the lab, we, je oh sorry, we generate the mouse uh, that is not skid hemophilia A, gamma null. In this way, we can transplant human cells, and we were doing this uh, very uh, easy experiment. Mix our cells with the cytodex microcarriers, hepatocytes or non-parenchymal cells, means also hematopoietic cells, mainly uh, Kupfer cells, and transplant in our mice in the peritoneum. And very interesting, there was no expression, no factor eight activity by hepatocytes, either at three days or seven days. Instead, we had activity from non-parenchymal cells. And this was the confirmation that also in, in human, we had expression in uh, uh, these cell types. And by the way, we later demonstrated that also Kupfer cells, they have a certain amount of, uh, of factor eight, but it's another story. And so at this point that we had the right cells to, uh, to transduce, uh, to use as a cell therapy and as a gene therapy, we went to build the, our lentiviral vectors. At this point, I, was, uh, I spent several years in targeting uh, expression of factor nine or factor, na uh, factor eight or factor nine in hepatocytes. At that point, I said, okay, I cannot use any more uh, hepatocyte-specific promoters. Let's uh, optimize, find out very good endothelial-specific promoters. Uh, maybe all of you are uh, familiar with the lentiviral vectors. It's just a, a slide to introduce the system. Lentiviral vectors derive from HIV-1, from a segregation of the cis sequencing from the trans sequences. The cis sequencing are the one necessary to build your vector, the expression cassette that you want to transmit in the, cell, in the cells. Instead, the trans sequences are genes from HIV that they will, uh, are necessary to build, let's say, the house of our genomic RNA. And this is what has been done. And more important, you have to remember that lentiviral vectors are hybrid viral uh, particles because you don't use the endogenous envelope, but you use a different envelope. That is the mainly, in most of the cases, the BSVG, the, uh, the glycopro glycoprotein G of the vesicular stomatitis virus. And this is very good because it's a pantropic uh, envelope and not like HIV. In this way, you will transduce only lymphocytes and macrophages. And this is what I was showing you here in the so-called transfer vector. You don't have any gene coming, uh, deriving from HIV, but only these uh, sequences that are necessary for reverse transcription, nuclear transfer, and integration, and first of all, also packaging, because we needed to have the PSI. Instead, in the trans constructs are the genes that are necessary, that are only three out of nine, GAG, POL, and REV. All the others, during the generation of lentiviral vectors, were eliminated. And this is the reason why, and this was done uh, we call the third generation and was done by Naldini 
uh, before coming back to Italy. For example, when I went to the United States, we were finalizing the, let's say, the optimization of this construct and the transfer vector. And so, which kind of tool I used to optimize my promoters? Because my goal was to express factor eight, and when you want to target the expression in lentiviral vector, you can use a transcription. You can uh, yes, use a transcriptional targeting. But first of all, you can have a different envelope instead of the VSVG. You can have some hepatocyte specific envelope or endothelial specific envelope were uh, described uh, in the past. But I have to say that doing this kind of targeting is quite cumbersome and not very efficient. Um, our idea, because it was already reported, was to do transcriptional targeting. And so you have a lot of promoter that you can use, the uh, hepatocyte specific. Instead, we concentrate on the endothelial specific, ICAM2, FLIC1, TAI2, VEC, and on over time other promoters. Or if you want to express your transgene in Kupfer cells, you use the CD11B promoter. And very efficient is also the CD11C promoter if you want to hit the dendritic cells. And also, you want also to have a post -tran transcriptional control using the MIRT. This is a strategy that was optimized the, in the laboratory of Naldini, in particular using this MIRT microRNA target sequence for 142 3P. Because in this way, what happens? When you do transcriptional targeting, the control is never 100%. You can have some off-target. And so the, and the off-target, most of the time, is in hematopoietic cells. If you use this kind of sequence, you can have the destruction the, of, of your RNA in hematopoietic cells. In this way, you can restrict the expression only in hepatocytes. And we did the same also with our endothelial promoter in a way not to have off-target in hematopoietic cells. Because when you have expression of your transgene in hematopoietic cells, as you know, you can trigger an immune response. Sorry, uh, it's a little bit didactic. And uh, for this reason, we demonstrate, but uh, we publish, and I'm, I don't have data, but the paper was published in 2017, that using the vascular endothelial cadherin, we can have endothelial expression of factor eight with the long-term expression without immune response. But uh, the level that we got were not fantastic. Were uh, between five, six percent of factor eight activity. And so uh, it came to my mind, why don't we study the na native promoter, the factor eight promoter? On the, uh, in 2010, there was published the, the clinical trial for the WASP disease from uh, Naldini's group, where I participated in the building of the transfer vector. We had to put together the WASP promoter with the WASP transgene. And it was very efficient. And also in, in animals, this is the part that I was helping the people there, was working well. And so my idea was, why don't we use factor eight promoters? Factor eight promoters was uh, described uh, in 1984 when uh, they cloned the factor eight gene. But since then, nobody was using this promoter. There were only two attempts uh, in, around 95 and 96. But uh, interesting, this is maybe where it comes from. These both groups described that the factor eight promoter is expressed in hepatocytes. And so nobody else checked. These are, if you go in literature and check, and uh, the only two papers you can, you can find is this. And so with my student, when I, uh, we came uh, home and we said, OK, let's check in silico what are the uh, binding sites that we can find on this promoter. 
and uh, it's true we found several uh, hepatocyte specific uh, binding but also several endothelial and hematopoietic actually there are more hematopoietic than endothelial but this is a kind of another story and in particular between the endothelial we found that there were a lot of ATS1 and ATS2 and incredible most of these uh, binding site were on the first 600 base pair of the promoter and so what we did was just to take the bona fide promoter described on nature and put in lenti a clone and put in lentiviral vector and this is what we did we went and we prepared the lentiviral vectors with gfp and we injected the tail vein the mice normal mice and we went to check the expression and this is interesting you can have some expression in the bone marrow and in particular as you can imagine cd11b were uh, very positive and also a certain amount of sca1 positive cell uh, sca1 cells were positive in the spleen again in cd11b and in the liver instead most of the positivity was on the endothelial markers but very positive like type 2 CD146, CD31, and a little bit there was also on um, uh, macrophages, but not so high. And this is the expression. And so you see in the liver one month and six months later, and the same in the spleen. This is the first information that you can, you can take. Using factor eight uh, promoter in immunocompetent mice, we didn't have any immune response against the GFP because we had long-term expression up to six months, but maybe later, but we had, to, we had to establish a time to kill our mice. And the expression in the, in the livers was really endothelial, was really specific of endothelial cells. And so at this point, what we did, we removed the GFP and we inserted the factor eight and we went to inject in our hemophilic mice. In our lab, we have three different uh, strains of hemophilic mice, bulb C, black six and 129, the original that was uh, generated by Casasian in 1992. And uh, these uh, experiments were, uh, were done in black six. And you can see that there was a very good expression, little more and better than uh, um, with the, the VEC promoter. You cannot see here because uh, I don't have the other one. And the interesting was uh, the bleeding assay that we did at uh, 52 weeks, uh, that is one year. And you could see that uh, almost the bleeding assay was similar to what you can see in, uh, with the, the wild type mice. And this is what you get with the, the uh, hemophilic mice. For example, a lot of my colleagues, uh, they always, when they see my results, they always say that uh, my group is not very good in performing factor eight activity because we have a phenotypic correct, correction that is much better uh, than uh, the, the data. But this is it, and so this is what I show uh, you can. The uh, other important things uh, that we noticed was this, that expressing factor eight under the native promoter, we were able to reverting the inhibitor titers in mice that were originally, you know, uh, um, we made these mice um, in, uh, how was it, uh, develop an immune response against factor eight with uh, just injecting uh, recombinant factor eight. And uh, after four weeks, uh, we injected the mice with uh, the lenti, with the factor eight, promoter factor eight. And what we saw that over time, there was a decreasing of the titer and increasing of a factor eight activity. And this was very good also because the inhibitory antibody, they decreased over time. Here is just the, let's say, characterize the type of the immunoglobulins that they were uh, uh, developed. And very important, the bleeding assay and the bleeding time were really improved, almost uh, as uh, I can tell you, like wild type mice. And this was really the proof that factor eight promoter is uh, able to tolerate the mice against uh, factor eight. And so you can have expression long term.
but we were not happy uh, of this. Okay, this is, uh, uh, you know, the activity was not um, a lot, was around 10%. We wanted to understand that there is a way to increase the activity and so, the, first of all, the production of factor eight. And so we asked to our colleagues several active form of factor eight that were recently, recently published. And so we went and see if this expression could be increased and was okay. But after, the best was when we asked for the best uh, codon optimized factor eight that we got from the group in England. And this is amazing. Using the factor eight promoter with this codon optimized, we really increased the factor eight activity. We double it and uh, more important, again, no immune response. Because one of the issues is that sometimes when you use codon optimized form, you can have some immune response. But using the, this promoter, we were still, uh, let's say, able to preserve the activity. On the same time, we had the, the theory, uh, we wanted to understand, but what happened? Why we have uh, tolerance expressing factor eight in endothelial cells? Uh, you have to know that uh, there is a lot of literature that describes that um, liver sinusoidal endothelial cells in the liver, they can function as non-professional antigen presenting cells. They have a kind of uh, role, but instead of triggering immune response, they usually trigger uh, tolerance. And so we were trying to understand which kind of mechanism is involved. And one of the important things for tolerance is uh, maybe is related to TREDs. And so what we did was this, we injected a, a big group of mice and after, after 15 weeks, actually after 11 weeks when the expression was stable, we divided the mice in two groups. One group didn't receive anti-CD25 antibody and the other group received the anti-CD25 antibody. In this way, we could uh, kill and eliminate all the T-regs that were in circle. And inc incredible, the mice started uh, to decrease factor eight activity, and more important, the inhibitor titer started to increase. Instead, the mice that they didn't receive the antibody were doing well uh, very without any problem. On the same time, you could see that this is not stable because we uh, injected the mice only with one dose of uh, antibodies and over time we see that factor eight activity ret return to normal and on the same time the antibody decreased. And this was very important for us to demonstrate that the tolerance that we can have through the expression of factor eight in endothelial cells is linked to the presence of T-Rex. And so this was a proof, and with this experiment, we published uh, our paper on blood advances uh, last year. But uh, this is okay for lentiviral vectors. You can have an expression um, using this long promoter that is over 1,000 base pair, but our idea was, can we shorter the promoter? You know, I have a problem because it seems that it's missing. Oh, no, okay. No, 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 that's okay. Maybe, uh, and uh, we use the shorter form that is half. Instead of uh, um, 1,100 base pair, we selected the famous 600 base pair where all the ATS1 and the ATS2 uh, binding site were present. And in, interestingly, as you see, the activity was maintained. And so this is very good when you use viral vectors that are smaller, they have an expression cassette that is uh, smaller, and so you can uh, uh, use this kind of, of uh, promoter. And again, the promoter was uh, still able to maintain tolerance and uh, able to 
give uh, phenotypic correction to our mice. And so we can uh, conclude this uh, part to say that factor rate expression under its natural promoter restore and sustain the therapeutic activity and targeting the expression in liver sinusoidal and epithelial cells, the P factor eight promoter avoid the appearance of antibodies and uh, even in mice that were immunized. And the uh, T-Rex seems to uh, be involved in these uh, processes of maintenance, the, maintaining the tolerance. And uh, more important, even the reduction of the size of the promoter maintain the endothelial expression and uh, the tolerance. Uh, this is fine, we finish, but we want uh, really to understand, is true that expressing our transgene in endothelial cells, we are adding tolerance, that really this is the role uh, TREGs are involved. We took advantage of a paper that was published in 2015 by the group of Brian Brown, uh, where they build a mouse that is called, uh, interesting, JD, that stays just AGFP death inducing, where these mice, they have a GFP specific TCR that is presented uh, with uh, these uh, um, on H2KD. And more important, uh, these 50% of these mice, they have specific CD8 T cells that they are specific for this peptide of GFP between 200 and 208. And it's quite specific because they recognize only GFP and, not, for example, non-yellow FP. And uh, this group demonstrated that if JDT cells uh, were injected in mice that are expressing uh, GFP in FOXP3 TREG depleted mice, the, we had a kind of um, a, a, an immune response upon vac vaccination. And so we wanted to be, be sure. If we take a mouse, oh, sorry, let's say, we, uh, these mice, they are in a very specific uh, background, not easy to find, it took us uh, uh, almost one year to breed. This is the parental mouse that is called P, uh, B10D2, and the G JD mice are on the same background. What we did, the experiment we did was this. We took the mice, we injected with Lenti using uh, two different promoters, Lenti with two different promoters, PGK, that is a ubiquitous promoter that uh, express uh, GFP in every cell and the stab2 stab GFP promoter that express uh, GFP, this is very interesting, not only in endothelial cells, but only in liver sinusoidal endothelial cells and in some sinusoidal cells in the spleen. And so it's very specific. And after, uh, Seven days, we inject the JD, JD cells, and so we made an, an adoptive transfer. In this way, if the, these cells, they see GFP, we can have some kind of destruction of the cells expressing GFP. And we went to kill our mice, because we have to kill the mice, to see the results, in the, uh, unfortunately, in the spleen and in the liver. And this is just the experiment we did, taking the JD mice, we had to recover the, the spleen and the lymph node and prepare the CD8 T cells. On the same uh, way we did with the parental mouse to take the same CD8 cells that were not uh, our normal uh, lymphocytes. And these are our group, no lentiviral vectors, lentiviral vectors, PGK and STAB, and the mice uh, had at least six weeks. And these are the results. When we killed the mice, this is what we saw. PGK is expressed in uh, no, uh, only lentiviral vectors, no uh, lymphocytes, and you see the expression in hepatocytes, and in some endothelial cells, and some Kupfer cells. When you inject the PGK GFP with uh, some CD8 cells, you start to see 
a kind of an immune response, but is still there. Instead, if you inject the JD cells that recognize GFP, they really were able to clear all the G GFP cells. And this was done actually in one week. It's quite a, a strong reaction. On the same time, these are the mice injected with the lengthy stub 2 GFP. And you can see the expression that is present only in endothelial cells. And if you inject the, sorry, the mice with the control CD8 cells, you see that GFP is still there after one week. But uh, most interesting that uh, uh, GFP is still there after two weeks after the injection, uh, injection of uh, JD cells. And so the expression of, factor, uh, of GFP by the endothelial cells was uh, able to protect our uh, mice from the destruction of the cells. JDT cells were not able to uh, destroy these cells. What we are studying now, this is just preliminary results, but uh, uh, to understand what is really the mechanism, what is uh, happening, uh, uh, how uh, T regs are involved, uh, what are the molecular mechanisms that are uh, showing this kind of uh, protection. And so this was a kind of proof that really expressing uh, transgenes, this is just a, G a GFP example, you have a protection of uh, your uh, transgene or if you want transduced cells from an immune response. And so this is uh, our conclusion that uh, all the mice that uh, received, the, the, I just put endothelial uh, GFP promoter, we have uh, after four, uh, 14 days, uh, most of them were LSEC morphology, the cells. But, and a few or no GFP cells were detected in mice receiving uh, PGK GFP after the JD cells, but uh, I would say almost uh, no detection. Instead, with the, the JD GFP cells in our promoter, we, um, uh, they were protecting and they killed most of the GFP cells in the PGK uh, injected mice. And this was just to demonstrate that expressing GFP under an endothelial promoter was uh, protecting. And, uh, um, okay, I'm going too slow. And this is just a very quick to show the importance of uh, ATS1 and the ATS2 in the factor 8 promoter. That we were able to study in vitro that really ATS1 and ATS2 are able to bind uh, to the promoter. And in particular, it seems that the master regulator of this system is ATS1. And ATS2 is important only when uh, ATS1 is present. And uh, we demonstrate this by mutants that we were building uh, in our lab, uh, taking ATS1 and ATS2 and removing the DNA binding domain of uh, this uh, transcriptional factor. And we went to study on the promoter uh, when the, or which part or which uh, transcriptional factor was uh, important. And this uh, uh, is showing here that if you remove the DNA binding domain of ATS1, you can see that the activity of the promoter is almost dead. Instead, if you remove the DNA binding domain of ATS2, you can see that the expression or the, sorry, the activity of the promoter is still there demonstrating that ATS1 is the most important uh, transcriptional factor that control factor 8 expression. And uh, this is just uh, uh, the total uh, assay that we have done with a different uh, promoter at a different size. You know, this is the long one, 1,100 base pair, minus 600, 400, and you can see that the activity until 342 base pair is quite high and specific. 
you lose the activity when uh, you try to use the sharpest promoter that is uh, less than 300 base pair, still with a little bit of activity or uh, of ATS1. And this is just to show that, uh, uh, oh yeah, can we, because I think it's better, sorry. Uh, these were the slides, sorry, that I was looking for, that uh, when you inject these uh, lentiviral vectors uh, expressing the short form of the factor eight promoter with the uh, GFP as a transgene, these vectors are really, really efficient because you can see GFP expression mainly in endothelial cells and the expression is quite strong. And in particular, you can see, and this has been repeated, this form that is quite short, that is less than 500 base pair, is uh, uh, very efficient. And this, uh, uh, again, you can see, with, um, is just two different staining. This is the live one uh, antibodies, that just to show that it is endothelial. And this is just the factor eight antibody showing that the GFP is not present in Kupfer cells. On the same is the same mice after four weeks showing that the expression was quite stable. And these are the same. And they are interesting the, the pattern of expression at 400X that you really recognize the presence of the sinusoidal endothelial cells that are really green. And this is uh, one of the best picture. On the same time, uh, as I told you, you have to remember that this promoter is also active in the spleen. And so, mm, and in the spleen, but not in uh, endothelial cells. And this is the interesting of this promoter. In the uh, liver is active only in endothelial cells. In the spleen, interestingly, is uh, active in some endothelial cells, but mainly in some macrophages, in some areas. And so showing, especially the short one, this is called 342, where you have a strong expression of GFP uh, on the border with the, between the red and the white part. And so this uh, is something that we are also exploring, trying to understand why we have diff this different activity. And so our conclusion, uh, oh, sorry, is that uh, in this uh, promoter, the ATS1 and the ATS2, they work in this way. We need to have ATS1 that binds the DNA, the promoter, and the ATS2 uh, stays on top. And for sure, we are exploring other transcriptional factors that maybe uh, can be involved in this uh, activity. And so uh, it's important to have short uh, promoter because really we want to try to use this promoter in a V context because it uh, will be interesting also to test the expression of a transgene in, uh, inside endothelial cells using a V. At the moment, there is no endothelia, or there is just one report that there is only one capsid or one combination of capsid because I think is uh, engineered, is not natural, that is uh, able to target the expression of AV inside uh, endothelial cells. And this is uh, the last part that uh, I will be very quick. I will just show what we have done, why we optimized all these uh, promoters. Because my idea was uh, to try to uh, have IPS from uh, hem hemophilic patients and make uh, endothelial cells correct and try to see if we can transplant back, not in patients, but in hemophilic mice, or with this regenerative medicine application to have a kind of uh, a scaffold uh, or pocket where we can put the endothelial cells that they can express a factor eight. Uh, and this was uh, our idea to take uh, uh, cells from uh, mononuclear cells. We were able also to isolate uh, uh, IPS from the fibroblast of hemophilic patients. But you have to know that hemophilic patients, they are scared. Every time you touch them, 
even if they are controlled, they take factor eight, they don't uh, love to be touched. And so we were able to get only two patients available uh, to give us a biopsy. And so we said we have to find a solution and was to take mononuclear cells, the Janish published a paper and the other Malek that is possible to generate IPS from mononuclear cells from the blood. And we tried with the just mononuclear cells, we were not successful. Our uh, best was to use the rare CD34 positive cells present, but were enough. We had a very efficient reprogramming, reprogramming. In two, three weeks, we were able to get IPS, very nice colonies. And uh, after the IPS were, we, uh, were uh, obtained, we did the gene correction. And sometimes we do gene correction after differentiation. But over time, we found out that it is better to try to correct uh, after IPS uh, formation. And our proof of concept was to take these endothelial cells uh, corrected and transplant in our uh, model of nod skid gamma, gamma, <coughs> gamma hemophilic A mice that were conditioned with this drug monocrotaline that is very toxic for the endothelium of the liver and see if we were able to have engraftment, engraftment and uh, proliferation as we did in our old paper using the liver sinusoidal endothelial cells from mice. And so this is what we have done. And so we characterize, you know, was very efficient. In 20 days, we were able to get colonies that were very, very nice, both from uh, healthy, pay, healthy donors and uh, hemophilic patients, and the colonies were nice were characterized from the stem cell marker and on the same time after we this was the long part it took us almost two years to optimize a very good and reproducible protocol to get bona fide endothelial cells not only bona fide but also stable over time and this was uh, what we were able to get, that we were able to have good endothelial cells that were positive to the specific marker like PCAM, Von Willebrand, KDR, PEC, and interesting, uh, uh, both the healthy endothelial cells start to express factor eight and also the vascular endothelial cadherin. And so this is also the characterization by fax of these cells both uh, hemophilic and uh, normal. Uh, I think was not, uh, sorry, I lost uh, one, something. And, uh, and after we did also some uh, uh, immunofluorescence. But after we went to look at the functionality and the cells were really endothelial cells because we were able to get a matrice LSA positive. And so we were able to have tubule formation but with a little difference between the healthy versus the hemophilic. But at that point, we had the bona fide cells from the hemophilic mice and also from the healthy mice, um, uh, sorry, the healthy donors, we transplanted in our mice, but uh, more important, also we uh, transduced also for uh, not only for factor eight, but also for GFP, because we wanted to see if really our cells were able not only to produce factor eight, but also to repopulate. And this is the repopulation that uh, we publish after three months. And uh, as you can see, we had a very good engraftment and proliferation of uh, our cells. And also they were able to reconstruct the structure that really are similar to endothelial, uh, to sinusoids, not only uh, endothelial cells in general. And this, uh, uh, we did the same because our idea um, here when we transplanted the, the LT cells just to see engraftment and proliferation, and here when we transplanted the cells corrected for factor eight. And this is interesting because we used our original promoter that was the vascular endothelial cadherin promoter to express factor eight. 
And you can see that over time, our mice were expressing, uh, they had the factor eight activity positive, and this was increasing. But this reflected what we have seen with the engraftment of the endothelial cells over time. And more important, when we uh, did the blood loss in our mice, there was really the, endoth the endothelial cells derived from the IPS were able to rescue the uh, hemorrhagic phenotype of our mice. Instead here, you, if you transplanted also only the hemophilic uh, endothelial cells, they were not able to rescue the phenotype. On the same time, as I told you, you know, this is a wonderful experiment, but uh, one of the things uh, when I talk with people says, okay, but you cannot give monocrotalin to patients. And ethically speaking, you cannot ask people to give a drug that uh, is gonna cause a problem. You know, the denudation of endothelium, you know, are uh, sensitive patients. And so it's kind of, nobody is gonna allow you to do this kind of experiment but is a proof of concept. And so our idea is really to have, uh, to build some kind of pocket uh, or uh, to have a, a place uh, where we can inject the cells and maybe they can express factor eight uh, for uh, some time. And this is what we have done with the famous microcarrier beads with the, the, end, the endothelial cells transduced with the factor eight. And these we were uh, able to inject in the peritoneum. And after uh, three weeks, this is uh, the longest time that we tested, we were able to find again cells in the peritoneum and cells that they were able to uh, express factor eight and be positive for factor eight activity. This is just a proof that the lentiviral vector cells were still there. They, were, they did not disappear. And this, uh, we develop a project uh, later, a uh, European project, using a similar approach, but where we found out to use a, a pocket, it's called a cell pouch, with uh, some Canadian partners, that they use this pocket already for um, a pancreatic islet. And so the idea is, instead of using the pancreatic islet that they will produce uh, insulin, we will put our endothelial cells that will produce factor eight. And this will be inserted under the skin and to have a vascularization of this pocket and have over time the expression of factor eight. And this uh, uh, is uh, what uh, is uh, ongoing on this uh, European grant. I will stop here that is possible, but not using uh, even IPS, because it's kind of cumbersome, have IPS, make them becoming endothelial cells. But we use a different uh, cell uh, model that are called the blood outgrowth endothelial cells that are very rare cells present in circulation. We are able to isolate, and so are really from the patient, to amplify them, they are primary cells, to correct them and inject. Uh, this work was done uh, the people of my lab, some of them were uh, involved. The study of the promoter involved uh, also other uh, people in our, uh, in our department and uh, there was a big uh, collaboration for the paper on the factor eight promoter with them a colleague of mine that is not anymore here. And, uh, and this is uh, all the consortium that we have from uh, uh, Europe uh, to make uh, all this possible. Thank you very much.